I'm losing my water here and everything else. Praise the Lord. Did that bless y'all or what? Yeah, if it's, if it's or what, I don't want to hear that. Amen. Now, Janice, I have never <coughs> told her this, but I'm going to tell you right now. Anytime you want to sing on grace, wide open door. I'm t- uh, when you sing on gra- about grace, God's grace, since, I guess since I've been the benefactor of it. Every one of us are a work of grace. Sorry, it just messes me up. Uh, I always loved that old hymn. Uh, the grace is sufficient for all of our sins, and uh, and that song I hadn't heard it in a long time, but uh, wow, it just the the lyrics and thank you, Janice, for singing that. Uh, what a way to start off. Uh, if you have your Bibles today, turn to First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter 2, honoring authority is honoring God. Honoring authority is honoring God. I don't know if y'all ever think about it that way. And uh, you may be tempted to get ahead of me a little bit and say, well, now, wait a minute, Brother Kirk, you're talking about the authority uh, in the home. You're talking about the authority in our church family. You... you the church as a whole? Are you talking about the authority in government? Are you talking about the authority in a marriage? What are you talking about? And my answer is yes. We may not find, we may, I may not give illustration or application for each one of those today because we may have to break those down in separate messages, but we're going to touch on several, okay? And uh, let's put it this way. There are a lot of people today that are lost and they don't understand authority and do not respect authority. Have no reason, they think, no reason to even acknowledge or respect or especially honor authority. So we're going to cover some of these things. But most of you, I hope and pray, and I believe most of you are probably believers today. And uh, if you've given your life to the Lord already, you should have already dealt with this because we worry so much about our rights and this and that, and some of that's valid. And when it's talking about government and some of the things we've got going on in our culture, I'm not delving off into all that today. We don't have time to cover all that. But I hope I can lay a foundation for you that will help you address a lot of those things. I think personally, at the end of this message, I really believe what Peter had written here for us and things we're dealing with in our culture and our nation today, it, it, it may not be addressing every situation, but I believe you'll be able to look at the end of this service and say, you know, that should cover about 90% of it. It really should. And a whole lot of it is our attitudes. We can become hard-hearted. We can, be, we can become... Uh, boisterous. We can we can have all of these attitudes as a believer that is actually non-productive at best for a believer. And I'll explain a little more of that later. But a whole lot of it is our perspective, and it's not it really. I didn't plan it this way, but it's not surprising that we start off with a song about grace because you know what the our biggest problems as believers a lot of times we forget where we come from we come from a place of desperateness a a a place of if you have never bowed your knees and repented and asked god to forgive you uh, of your sins then i'm sorry you've never been saved if you have never come to a place in your life where you, where you surrendered yourself to him and said, Lord, I can't do this. I can't, I, I can't even. And I, I think of a song that Brother Billy sings a lot of times. Uh, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I, I can't even take a step 
I, Lord, thank you for letting me breathe your air. Let's get back to that. He blesses us so much. We don't deserve anything but death, hell, and the grave. Praise God for grace. Because it's only through His grace that we are given these blessings of living and, and, and being able to experience all these wonderful things that He has for us. And you may be hurting today. You may not be able to see your blessings. You may, a lot of things may be clouded because of your experience, because of something you're going through right now. You may not be able to see God's blessings because of what you're focused on in your hurts. But if, if you can just step away from that for a moment, think about where he's brought you from. We don't know where he's taking us. We know the end result is going to be the glory, but in the process between now and then, it, it, the road gets rocky. It does get rough. Uh, and that's not the main topic today, but I guess somebody needs to hear that. Uh, so by way of introduction... We're focusing on 1 Peter 2, uh, starting verse 11. But uh, before I read any of the passages, I want to give you a, a, a couple of statements of foundation and, and get you uh, maybe even a question or two to get you uh, kind of on board here. If honoring authority is honoring God, listen close. If honoring authority is honoring God, which most of us would say amen to that, then when we dishonor authority... We dishonor God. And I would like to say this, because we have some teenagers here today. We have some youth. I won't say this right off the bat. Whether it's your parents, your grandparents, your teachers at school, your pastor, your Sunday school teachers, all these people I'm naming, God has placed them in your life for your good. That don't mean that all of those people are good. We got some people in authority roles that are not good. But you're to honor them in the position they hold. Even when they're not good, you're still to honor their authority in your life. We'll go through a little bit of how to do that in a moment. But when you disobey your parents, you disobey the, the authorities that's placed over you, you are dishonoring God. Just remember that. That's specific to young people, but there's plenty of application coming for us adults as well. So what about this statement? Whether those in authority over me are good or evil... The way I respond tells everyone around me who I really belong to. And I think, look and see, I believe I've got that on the slide. Uh, whether those in authority over me are good, yeah, or evil, the way I respond tells everyone around me who I really belong to. A whole lot of it is some things we can have righteous anger over. Sometimes we, we should be righteously angered over things, but we should never dishonor the authority that's placed over us. We, should, we don't have to agree, and we don't have to bow our knee. Again, we got, I've got plenty to say about that in just a moment. But when somebody's in authority over us, we are to honor the authority God has placed over us. All right, here's another question, or, or another statement. I don't have to agree. I just said that a little in a different way. I don't have to agree with my authority, but I must submit in order to honor God. Now listen to this. I can submit to evil authority. Here's the challenge. Someone who is in authority over you, they may be just pure evil. You may have a, a, a boss at work. That is just on your case for no reason. He's just trying to just rile you up, trying to push your buttons. You may be working for someone who could be, you could literally see yourself as a believer thinking, man, this is my spiritual enemy. The devil is using him. 
But how about looking at it this way? Honor the position they hold. Submit to their authority. But you don't have to surrender yourself to them. And I'll explain a little bit better. I can submit to evil authority without surrendering to that authority. Not surrendering your life to them. But again, honoring their position. When, so here, here's where the rubber meets the road. When is it okay to stop submitting to authority? I may have that on the screen as well. When is it okay to stop submitting to authority? In that statement, if you take notes, I challenge you to write that down. When that authority demands what belongs to God. When that authority demands what belongs to God. We don't worship the one in authority over us. We don't bow down to the one that's in authority over us. We bow down only to Him, to the Lord God Almighty. We surrender ourselves to Him and Him alone. You know, it could be uh, allegiance, worship, surrender, or certain demands. A lot of things falls under those. And you can't take out this, this idea of, of uh, discernment. I believe every, every Christian, when they become a believer, has this one gift. And it may be, un like most of us, may not be developed yet. It might be early stages. But I, I believe with all my heart, every believer has a little bit of discernment. We may not have a lot. We may tend to compare ourselves with somebody that's way on down the road, an older believer, and we think, man, I just, I, I'm praying for discernment like they have. Well, that's okay. God develops these gifts as well. But every believer should have a little bit of discernment at least. Now, what is discernment? It's determining what direction to go, what to believe, what to what to say, whoa, whoa, something's not right here. And being on a job, being even in a, in a, a, a worship service, listening to a pastor. I challenge, that's why we open the Word of God. That's why I want you to see this passage we're in and we go through it together because you don't, you, you can honor me as your pastor, you can love me as your pastor, but you still hold me accountable in a lot of ways. And if I ever don't preach the Word of God, then you need to call me on it. You, and that goes for everybody. When we're watching somebody on TV or on, uh, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and there's some pe people that preaches on YouTube, of course, and, and some Bible studies and different things. But I'm telling you, I, I keep them in check for me personally because I'll open the Word, and they're going through it, and I'm going, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're in left field. No more of that one. God never said that. Where are they coming from? So, there's plenty. You should have some discernment. Um, here's, here's one thing that I, that I thought of. It's a Bible story, not just a story. I believe with all my heart it, it actually happened. I believe uh, Brandon and Julie went through this study with uh, or this, this story and, and study uh, with the youth of, of probably a few months ago. But uh, three characters in Daniel's days, three of Daniel's friends, by the way. Y'all remember them? All, several of y'all got their name, but that they're coming out at different times. That was pretty good. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love those names. Those Hebrew young men. There's not a, I don't believe, a better example in Scripture of honoring authority in our lives than those three young men. They were in captivity. They had evil authority over them. But they honored it. Until, right? Until the authority required what belonged to God. 
So if you ever wonder, how far do I go with this? How, how, why, how much does God want me to submit to this authority over me when I can't stand it? It's eating me up on the inside. But a lot of times we're praying God get us out of a situation, if it's a job especially, or if it's a governmental role, or if it's something the government's requiring of us. We've had it really good, by the way, and things are changing. And I don't know what's on the horizon. But I, I've talked with a lot of people. I've talked with a lot of older, wiser people than me. And even people that don't agree with me politically. And it seems like it's a 100% response on this. They all say, things are happening that I don't like. The direction we're going something this government's starting to require more they're starting to delve into more they're starting to look at more they're starting to get their tentacles in things that they shouldn't have them in so that's as a side note but we need to we need to be praying for that we need to honor our authority we need to when people look at our lives they shouldn't see us as as uh people that are uh that are that are causing trouble but people that are saying you know I'm going to I'm going to be a good citizen I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do I'm going to love people but until they when they start requiring what belongs to God that's off limits so set your boundaries that way and you'll know that you'll be okay so as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they honored a wicked king in a wicked culture until the king demanded they bow and worship him. They had submitted to this wicked king all they could until he required what belonged to God. They served and honored, listen, in grace. They served and honored in grace. And even when they protested, even when they got thrown into the fiery furnace, they did that in grace. How'd they do that? They didn't come out with weapons and say, you ain't taking us. No. They said, O king, very respectfully, O king, you basically, they said this, king, you do what you got to do, but we're not bowing. We honor your authority. We honor your position. And we'll s submit to your position. But we're not going to surrender our worship. We're not going to surrender what belongs to God and God alone. We serve one God, and you ain't him. That's not right in proper English, is it? When your life's on the line, I don't think it matters how, how you say it, is it? All right. Uh, uh, so... They submitted in grace, and ultimately they defied the king, defied the king in grace. So their, their lives were showered with grace. Can we do that today? Yes. We, we can have a lot better attitudes, and, and we can be known for people of the book. And then when somebody comes knocking, how about we do this? I, this has kind of been on my mind lately because of all of our stuff that our culture and our nation's going through how about we we do this when somebody comes up and they say hey are you in this party or that party are you or do you lean to uh conservative we say that how do they do it? oh they say that's on the right and they say liberals on the left so that you on the left or you on the right you see how everybody wants to put us in the category don't they how about we do this Say, so, well, I don't worry too much about that. You know what I want to do? I'm just going to get entrenched in this book right here. And I don't give a rip about your politics. I really don't care about your party. I don't care about your leanings. This is what I live by. And when it says you're wrong, you're wrong. And when it, when it says sin, it's sin. Because the Bible I read and I believe is true, for it to be true, it's always been true and it'll always be true. It's consistent. And we've got to be consistent. We've got we to stand on a firm foundation. I preached 
a couple of weeks ago about the cornerstone, the Lord Jesus. He's the cornerstone. We can get so entrenched in political views and stuff to where we, we're not going to be any use for God's kingdom. We just need to be in the book. And, and, and if they're falling off on the left side of it or the right side of it or wherever they are, it, doesn't, it shouldn't matter to us because we're, 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 we call ourselves Christians. We're going to be believers when it ain't popular. And we're going to stay with the stuff when it ain't popular. And if it don't fit into our politics, guess what it needs to go out the window? The politics. It needs to go. Obviously not running for office. Politicians wouldn't say that, would they? Politics need to go out the window. Well, I, I keep, keep what I'm saying in perspective, okay? Here's another question. Do you want favor with God? Say, so, well, now, I don't know about favor. You're saying you want favor. You want special treatment. You want Now, listen. In the world we live in, the world that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego lived in, the world that Peter lived in, there are times when it is right and it is scriptural and you can follow the, the, uh, the, the, these old saints and patriarchs of the word. They prayed for God's favor. Why? Well, it wasn't about them. They weren't praying. You, you don't see anywhere in scripture, I challenge you find anywhere that Paul said, Lord... I'm just, I'll serve you when you fix this situation. Uh, I'll, I'll serve you if you'll keep me from being persecuted. If you'll keep me from being beaten, I'll serve you. He never did that. He never prayed for the pain to, to go away. He prayed for the thorn, God to remove the thorn, whatever that was. But God didn't remove it. He stayed faithful, and he was always a bold witness for Christ. Why was he a bold witness for Christ? Because he prayed for boldness. He did, instead of praying for his situation to change when he was in a dungeon, a dark dungeon, and being persecuted for something he didn't deserve, instead of whining and complaining and crying and moaning and groaning, he said, Lord, give me boldness. Give me boldness to face whatever comes down the pike. Give me boldness to stand for you when it's not popular. Give me boldness to say what I need to say. Give me boldness to love people when they seem to be unlovable. Give me boldness, Lord. That's why we know him as the most bold witness for Christ in Scripture. Don't know of anybody else. Nowhere close. So... Here, a good biblical example uh, of finding favor with God is another Old Testament. Old Testament character named Joseph. Y'all know who he is, right? We know him as the man, the coat of many colors. We also know him as a man that was sold into slavery by his own brothers. We also know him as, a, as a, a, the, one of the youngest. He had one younger brother than him, but in his time he, he, was, uh, he was shown favor by his father and his brothers were jealous of him and his brothers hated him because of his dreams, which became true. And... Uh, sold him into slavery. Uh, we also know that, <clears throat> that he got a lot of things. See, he's an Old Testament picture. Make sure you understand that. An Old T Testament picture of Christ. You ever thought about that? He's an Old Testament picture of Jesus. <clears throat> he was persecuted for what he didn't deserve. He didn't earn that. <clears throat> he was... Uh, Falsely accused. He was, he was brought into a palace and accused by his superior, the one who he was honoring that authority. He submitted to that authority. He didn't surrender his life to him, but he submitted to that authority, and God showed favor on Joseph. He was falsely accused and put in prison 
falsely accused by Potiphar's wife who tried to have a sexual relationship with him, left his coat, run away from her, and still got falsely accused and thrown in prison. <clears throat> At that point, I would have probably been bawling and squalling. I would have been moaning and groaning. Put me in a dark dungeon. Why am I, you got me here, Lord? I don't deserve this. I've been faithful. You were showing favor on me. What happened? What did I do wrong? You never see that from Joseph. But God showed favor on Joseph. Not only brought him out, he put someone in his path to share his uh, dream with, and uh, the dream that was presented from the, from the uh, king, and then he interpreted it. Nobody else could interpret it. He was exalted. For you know it, God has shown favor on Joseph again, placed him, listen, he was the second most powerful man in the world at that time. Second most powerful man in the world. Who does that? When God shows favor, things happen. Is it okay for a believer to say, God, please show favor? Yeah, but you better be walking with him and surrender to him and asking him, when you ask him, show favor, and you're asking for his blessings, well, we need his blessings. We need him to show favor, but <clears throat> it shouldn't be for our own advancement. We should be asking God to show favor on us so that we can reach more people for his kingdom. Then, it can't be selfishness. Joseph got elevated. He got exalted. He got lifted up to a high level, not for Joseph by himself. God did show favor on him. He did love him. But that was almost, that was almost a blessing on the side. You know what the main thing was? He exalted him for the purpose of preserving a whole generation of people. He blessed multitudes of people through Joseph. So should we look for God's favor? Should we ask for God's favor? Yes. But listen, when you honor the authority that God's placed over you in whatever role it is, we have from Scripture right here in Peter's writings that God will show favor on us. Honor the authority God has placed over you. Let's look at that. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's see. Kind of got lost in my passage here. Hang on just a second. Well, let's back up to verse 13. <clears throat> Submit yourselves to the Lord's sake, to every human institution, whether to a king as to, the, to one in authority, or to governors, as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God, that by doing right you may silence the ignorance of foolish men, act as free men, and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. You know, we wouldn't be focused near as much on uh, somebody infringing on us or our rights if if we remember who we are we've been blood bought and and we're a bond slave of Jesus Christ uh, you know what the bond slaves did they were slaves that came out of slavery and their their owners were so good to them they loved them so much they had such a good relationship to them they said I want to be your slave by choice which is really not a slave right I want to serve you for the rest of my life what would those Slave, I, I read some things where some of them, I don't know which earlobe was, but they take your earlobe. This sounds painful. Uh, except to women, it's got piercings. Uh, they, put their, they put their earlobe on, a, on a, the doorpost and drive, drive some, uh, a nail through it. And they would literally mark them. They would have, be marked for that. That's at least one, one case of it. But... Uh, they were showing, 
I want to be identified with this person. It's a bond slave. So God doesn't call us slaves. We join him by choice because we want to serve him for the rest of our lives. Why? Because he is perfect. He is righteous. He is holy. He's done for us what nobody else can do. So we are his bond slaves. Now, some people get freaked out by saying, are you talking about slavery? Slavery is horrible. No, this is a choice. Totally different thing. So verse 13, look at this. The words submit yourselves are the translation of a Greek military term. It means to arrange in military fashion under the command of a leader. Got it on the screen if you want to jot it down. The Greek military term meaning to arrange in military fashion under the command of a leader. So submit yourselves. That's a choice to do not because it's been demanded of you, but because you choose to submit yourself to that leader. In the second part of that verse, it, it says, for the Lord's sake. Peter is saying by submitting to every human institution and authority over them, they were doing it for the Lord's sake. You ever thought about that? You have somebody in authority over you that you disagree with, you might wholeheartedly disagree with them, but Unless they're requiring something that belongs to God, you submit to their authority. I remember working in a business that there were a lot of times I disagreed with the owner. But guess who owns the business? The one I submitted to. And I submitted to him till I left. When I left, I didn't have to submit to his authority anymore. But all the good, the bad, and the ugly, it's his, it was his business. And I knew as a believer the best testimony I could have with people around me when they knew I didn't agree with some things, as long as it wasn't illegal things and immoral things, but just certain directions when they, they knew I didn't agree with certain things. But they could see even in my disagreement, I still submitted to that man's authority because he owned the company. I wish I could say I never sat and complained about it, but I did. That was a sin. All right. So remember, they were dealing, in Peter's day, they were dealing with an empire and a culture that became anti-Christian through Nero's leadership. We think we disagree with our leadership now. We think we're persecuted now. Listen, Christians in the early church under Nero, I've, I've, I've shared some of this before. Some of you have already heard it. But there were things done to believers during that time that we, we, can't, even, we can't even talk about it in, in a mixed setting. Horrible things. By submitting to kings, governors, and all leaders in authority over them. Not because those leaders deserved it, but because God said to they were submitting to God's authority. And here, one of the best, <clears throat> another, the best example I can think of from Scripture of how to submit to uh, rule over us and our, our governmental, governmental role is when Jesus submitted to the Roman government even though it didn't honor God. Roman government didn't own, honor God it, it, it was uh, very wicked, but yet these religious leaders came to Jesus one time. Look, uh, by the way, flip over there with me. Look over at uh, Matthew chapter 22, and, and we'll start closing with this. <clears throat> one of the best examples, I think the best example, when we talk about the, uh, submitting to, to government. Chapter 22 of Matthew, look down at verse 15. 
Every time Jesus had a controversy, every time he had uh, irritations, if you'll look, the people he was dealing with was religious leaders. <laughs> they were all religious people. He didn't have conflict and problems with those that were, uh, that were alcoholics, winos, and people on the street, prostitutes. He had problems with these religious leaders. Here you can see it. <clears throat> it says the Pharisees went and plotted, plotted together how they might trap him in what he said. So they worked out a plan. They sent their disciples, their disciples, to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and teach the word of God and truth and defer to no one. For you are not partial to any. Now, if you want to set a trap for somebody, boy, it's really conniving when you start going in bragging on them, isn't it? So I know you teach wonderful things. I know and they're, Jesus is not fooled by this. So he said, they said, tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to give a poll tax to Caesar or not? Oh, you think you ought to pay your taxes or not? This is a wicked Government, surely you don't think we should pay our taxes because this, this government is wicked. So they're setting a trap. <clears throat> so Jesus perceived their malice and said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? I love how he pulls all his punches right he just he, he just handles them with kid gloves and these are authority these are religious authority people these are people I, I don't want to make them mad no you don't see that out of Jesus he just right off the bat calls them hypocrites why are you testing me you hypocrites show me the coin used for the poll tax and they brought him a denarius and he said to them whose likeness an inscription is this. They said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and do to God. Give to God what is God's. Pretty simple, huh? So simple, but yet, after they were hearing this, they were amazed. And leaving him, they went away. More than one way to shut somebody up, right? Whose inscription's on it? Just give him, give Caesar what's due to Caesar and give God what's due to God's. I have heard somebody say one time, said, uh, uh, when they were talking about tithing, they said, I don't believe the government should require more than what God requires. Good thought. Uh, verse 18, of, back in 1 Peter. I'm going to read this and then we'll, we'll finish. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. You, you get that? Leaders that are over you, be submissive to them as believers. It doesn't say only the ones that are good. No, he includes those who are not good or cruel even. All right, here's where I got to earlier. And we paused, I went on to something else, but this is the verse. For verse 19 says, For this finds favor. If for the sake of conscience toward God a person bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly, for what credits, credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated you endure it with patience? But if when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it. And what does the last part say? This finds favor with God. I don't know about you, but when days are tough, whether it's on a job, in a home, whether it's uh, for, uh, for children, I, I, I try to always include 
for our children. I, I, we do pounce on this as as uh, as uh, parents and adult uh, parents and and grandparents. We say, "Hey, children, you got to obey your parents. Obey your parents, and that's fine." But we should also include for the parents, don't don't. Don't force your children to wrath. Don't, don't push them and push them and nitpick them to death. Says don't, don't cause your, your children to lash out in wrath. So we need to always include that too. And I know some situations are like that. But children, youth, there's not a better thing that you can do to find the favor of God on your life and the blessings of, on your life and make your life a whole lot better than to honor the authority God has placed over you. You don't have to love the situation. You don't even have to agree with those that are over you. But you must, as a believer and having a right relationship with God, you must submit to the authority over you. I hope, I hope that our testimonies are good in that, that, that people around us look at us and don't see us as complainers but see us as people who stand on principle, stand on the Word of God, and say, I don't agree with this direction, but I submit to it because God has, for some reason, allowed this authority to be over me. I don't have to love it. I don't have to love them. But I do have to honor their authority in my life. Is everybody okay with that? If you're not... We can talk about it some more later. Everybody stand.